Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider many simple examples of a particular type of integration by parts where I have a polynomial times a trig or exponential. And I'm really interested in only the basic ones. So the ones which are like sine, cosine, exponential, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine. I'm not including, so exclude things like tan or secant, or things like that, which have which have sine over cosine, which are sort of like rational functions. I'm excluding those, just looking at polynomial times trig or x. The general strategy is the polynomial part you differentiate, the trig or exponential part you integrate. So that's how you decide the part to differentiate, part to integrate. But you usually have to apply integration by parts multiple times. And, and so you have to keep repeating till the polynomial differentiates to a constant and then do the integration. So, Let's do some examples and then I'll, I'll come back to the general idea. Uh, I have the actual differentiations and integrations in this uh, sheet which I'll bring out every time we are stuck with something. This is just the basic which you should already know. Okay. Let's start with x cosine x dx. Okay. So what do you have, what should you pick as the part to differentiate and what should you pick as the part to integrate? So what should you pick as the part to differentiate here? X. Hmm? X. And what should you pick as the part to integrate? Cosine. Okay. So what is the derivative of X? The derivative of X is 1. The antiderivative of cosine is? Sine. Sine. So remember that the general expression goes like x sine, sine x. x. So it's the product of both the sort of function that though it's proper this function times the antiderivative. So both of them are anti-differentiated minus the integral of this differentiated, this integrated. So it's one sine x dx. So what's that? That's your question. So it's x sine x minus the integral of sine is negative cosine. As cosine. cosine. Yeah, I'll just write an extra step here. Plus c. So that's x sine x plus cosine, cosine x. x plus c. c. Yeah. So you had a minus from this formula and a minus when you did the integral and so you got a plus. Okay. The next example, x sine x dx. Okay. So what do you take as the part to differentiate? Uh, the polynomial. And the part to integrate is a trigonometric function. What's the integral of sine? Co negative cosine. Negative cosine. So you get x times negative cosine x minus the integral of derivative of x. Well, we do, we could have done that in advance, but you could also do it while you write the formula. Derivative of x is 1. So you get 1 times. So you have two negatives here. Uh, well, let's just do this more system. So you have x times minus cosine x. So that's negative x cosine x minus the integral of minus cosine x. So that's minus of minus sine x because the integral of cosine is sine. You have two minus, so you'll get plus sine x as I'm skipping a step here. Okay. So, so how would you, if you, if you just, if you're not sure of these answers, I'm sure because I did these calculations earlier as well, but if you're not sure of these answers, just this. If you're not sure of these answers, you can differentiate this and check you get the same. Let me do it with the second one. So negative x cosine x. Okay, we'll keep it here. Negative x cosine x. I differentiate. I get negative 1 times cosine x plus negative x times derivative of cosine is negative sine. So negative 1 times cosine x plus negative x times negative sine x. So that's 
negative 1 cosine x plus x sine x. The x sine x already comes here. The negative cosine x, what will happen to that? That will cancel with the cosine x coming from the derivative here. So in general, when you're checking an integration by parts problem, what usually happens is you have to use a product rule to simplify the derivative. And then some of, then the sort of the second term of the product rule will cancel with the term in the next piece. So what happened here? Okay. Okay, what's the third thing to do? X square cosine x dx. Okay, what's the, so x square differentiate cosine x integrate. I'm, I'm going to read it a little faster now. So it's x square times the integral of cosine is sine x minus the integral of derivative of x square is 2x times sine x. Okay. By now you should remember the formulas anyway, right? So x square sine x minus twice of now you're doing integral of x sine x. Okay? So that's x times well, we already done it here. So maybe I'll if if I, if I hadn't already done this here, then I would have to redo this. But since I already did this calculation up here, I'll just write down the answer. So it's x times minus cosine x plus sine x. The plus c doesn't have to be copied. Huh? The plus c can come on the outside. Okay, so here, this one, I just use the fact that I've done this integral up here. If I hadn't, I would have had to do it explicitly. Okay. So, what happens when you simplify that? x squared sine x plus 2x cosine x plus 2x cosine x minus 2 sine x minus 2 sine x plus c. plus c. Okay. How many times did we use integration by parts? Well, twice. I didn't do it explicitly here because I only did it here, but if I had to, I would have done one. So I used integration by parts twice because the degree of the polymer is 2. Now, how many times did I actually integrate cosine? Three times. Because two times to do the integration by parts and then one time at the end. Right? So the first, integ first integration was finding sine as the antidote for cosine and then there were two integrations that happened here. So while these two problems required one integration by parts and two integrations, this third problem requires two uses of integration by parts and effectively three integrations of the function. Okay, let's do another one. So let's do x e to the x dx. So derivative of exponential is exponential, integral of exponential is exponential. So, so it's x times the integral of e to the x minus the integral of 1 times e to the x dx. So this is just x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. Plus c. Okay, great. So we have done 4 out of 5 examples. Let's do the, the last one. So integral x squared e to the x dx. So this is x squared times e to the x minus integral derivative of x squared is 2x e to the x dx. Okay, now if I wanted I could just plug in the expression right above here, but I'm, I'll just do it explicitly again. So it's x squared e to the x, e to the x minus twice of integral of x e to the x dx. I could use the above, but I'll just redo it. So it's nice. x e to the x minus integral derivative of x, which is 1, e to the x dx. So this is x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x minus 2 times minus is plus 2 times the integral of e to the x dx which is just e to the x plus c. If you want the answer, if you want, you can also factor it and write it 
like this. So this is another way of writing the answer. So in general, how many times do you have to use integration by parts? Twice. Okay. Right, that's for this one. But in general, it's determined by the degree of the polynomial. That's the number of times you have to use integration by parts. But the number of integrations you have to do is one more. Because there's one final integration you have to do. Okay. And so the number of integrations you do is one more than the degree of the polynomial. From these, you can sort of see the general picture. Uh, let me write down the formula here. Down here. You can forget those terms actually. So down here. So integral x fx dx is if you take f as the part to integrate, it's x times the integral of f minus the double integral of f. That's essentially what integration by parts is doing, right? It's x times the integral of f minus integral of derivative of x times integral of fx. So integral of this. So x times the integral of f minus the double integral of f. And I'll just write the corresponding formula for x squared fx dx. So it's x squared times the integral of f minus 2x times the double integral of f plus 2 times the triple integral of f. I mean, that's, that's, it's all very similar to this one. Okay, but these are the general formulas. What it's basically saying is, if you want to be able to do x fx dx, you just need to know how to integrate f twice. If you want to do x squared fx dx, you need to know how to integrate f. How many times? Thrice. Thrice. You can, you can look at all these formulas and quickly see how they, how you can quickly see them. So x cosine x, the integral of that is x times integral of cosine, which is sine, minus the double integral of cosine. So it's x sine x minus double integral of cosine is negative cosine. So it's a minus, so you get x sine x plus cosine x. If you want to do x squared cosine x, you should get x squared times the integral of cosine, that's sine, minus 2x 